This is the second video in a series of videos that I'm recording about Mike Caulfield's SIFT framework, otherwise known as the four moves. In the first video, I share a little bit about why I decided to embark on this little adventure. And in this one, I'm going to be giving an overview of the four moves. Before I get started, I just want you to know Mike Caulfield does this much better in the sense of he is an expert at this stuff and I am more of a beginner. And the reason why I'm sharing my findings is because I think you may potentially be able to learn from my mistakes. And I, I guess another hope that I would have is to realize that this stuff isn't as hard as it sometimes looks. That I know I wanna challenge myself and I welcome you to do the same in that we can do this. We can do this and um, John Stepper is a person who thinks a lot about ways of learning in community and he talks about working out loud and that's what I'm doing here is working out loud and going to give it an overview of the SIFT framework and what I've been able to learn about it so far. So the S in SIFT stands for stop. When we come across a story and we think, oh, my goodness gracious, can you believe that? <laughs> if it, especially if it evokes some kind of emotion in us, that's not the best time to just mindlessly forward it on and or retweet it or w whatever the, the case may be. We first want to ask, do I know who this is? What, what this website is, what this news source is that's sharing this, the rep, their reputation, what they're known for, the purpose of their entity, and also, anything about that claim? Do I know if that's, you know, just a notoriously false story that's been floating out there for years, then I can stop before I even get myself into too much trouble. And then the second part of stopping, which I already can tell you early in this project have already began to encounter is that feeling of overwhelm. And when we experience that feeling of overwhelm, every single one of these things, it just wouldn't be possible for the vast majority of us to go and do those kinds of deep dives. A lot of our reading on the web is going to be more shallow, but that doesn't mean that in our shallow reading, we can't do these four moves and these quick checks to increase the likelihood of passing on information and taking information into our own learning process that has a greater likelihood of being accurate. So the first thing in terms of after we've stopped, <laughs> as, we, as we move on to the next phase, the I in SIFT is for investigating the source. We want to know what we're reading before we even waste our time reading it and that emotional energy, etc. And again, it doesn't have to be the world's deepest dive. We can just go and there, there, as we get more into this, a really quick and easy way, for example, would be go to Wikipedia and search for that source there and that's a quick and easy way to find out a little bit of background that can help us navigate all of this. We can also find trusted coverage. That's the F in SIFT. So I've, I've looked at the source of this one thing that I'm looking at, but have other organizations also done reporting on this and had similar findings? Is there anything that we could find out here? And then we can also trace the claims, the quotes, the media back to the original context. And that gives us yet another lens. None of these steps in and of themselves is sufficient when done together. And again, it is possible to do it relatively quickly, but when done together, we're layering on and increasing our likelihood that we are going to be passing on and taking in something that is credible and worthy of our and others' attention and learning. And I mentioned already having made some mistakes related to this, and so my next video is going to be about the first story that I decided to document of my going through the SIFT process. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Pick the wrong one. Pick the wrong one. And it, it, immediately I hearkened back to Mike Caulfield sharing when he was on the Teaching in Higher Ed podcast about when he works with students and with others that are learning about misinformation, then they don't start with something super controversial, super complicated, you know, that, that they actually start really outside of what people are generally talking about so that he can build up the skills build up the confidence before we get to something that's really a super dicey one or super complicated for various reasons. And so the first one that I selected, again, I'm still gonna do it anyway, cause I'm, I'm not gonna hide from my mistakes that I make in this process. But the first one was a story about Apple the company Apple and I own a lot of Apple products. And so instantly I've got, you know, some issues around identity and cognitive dissonance that are going to come up when that is the case. And so a story about them being reluctant to get rid of suppliers who are not uh, adhering to their standards, to Apple's standards around not using child labor. And so that wasn't the best place to pick, <laughs> not the best place to start. I just happened to be reading the news last night and I've already set a, aside this goal for myself. And so I thought, oh, boom, I'll just bookmark that and save it. And, you know, it wasn't the greatest, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to make mistakes. And so I'm going to document them along the way. And just thanks for watching this video. And the next one, again, will be a deeper dive into this story using the SIFT framework. Thanks for watching.